Good morning. Um, welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is unbottling. If we often, um, or many of us, have learned to contain our feelings by bottling them all up, and it's a process to unbottle them in order to heal. So we're going to be talking about that today. But before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your molecules, your cells, your electrons, lighting you up, creating this brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and rub them vigorously against each other. Feel the sensation, the friction, the temperature. And as you stop rubbing them together, feel the tingling and the tickling and allow yourselves to become present right here, right now to these remarkable physical forms that enables you to experience light. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're talking about unbottling, unbottling all the emotions that we have bottled up and stashed away so that we wouldn't be overwhelmed by them. So this topic came up because uh, I was talking with someone who has managed, in big air quotes, managed their emotions for years and years and years through many, many traumatic situations. And um, is now in the process of coming, reckoning, coming to a reckoning, reckoning with those emotions. And um, the it's a challenge. I, I imagine you've all experienced when you have a bottle of a carbonated drink, if it's been shaken up and um, or if it's over carbonated and, and you go to open it, all the thing, all the bubbles fly out all at once and, and it overflows. And um, I, I personally, having made fermented drinks, I have sprayed my kitchen with, with um, effervescence that exploded from from a carbonated bottle. And um, I think that there's a potential for that to happen if we are, are not respectful, cautious, in, and, and gentle in releasing these pent up emotions you know, that that we can try and put some kind of regulator valve on, on the container so that um, it doesn't explode everywhere and the emotions don't explode. So it's a delicate dance. Um, and I think that that's why so many of us leave leave these emotions bottled up because we're afraid of what might happen if we start releasing them or, or start confronting them. So I just want to uh, make note that if you are writing comments and I'm not responding, it's because I don't see them. So 
Um, if you go to the Enlightened World Network Facebook page or YouTube channel and you put your comments there, I should be able to see them. So, um, yeah. Um, emotional energy is super, super powerful. And those of us who have experienced really intense emotions might have a um, reluctance to revisit those emotions or to fall back into the experience of those emotions because they're so powerful. And yet, in order to free ourselves, we need to find a way to process through those, those feelings because otherwise, otherwise they essentially hold us hostage. And um, I believe there are gentle ways to be able to do that. Um, you know, maybe we can feel into, well, so here's, it, it's sort of a, it's sort of a paradox because what happens is we shut down our ability to feel. So then to find an inroad back to the feeling can be, can be challenging. Um, there's such a deep sense of disconnection and dissociation within ourselves. And so um, it may be that we get to practice alignment or practice connection, like to try to just allow ourselves to focus attention on maybe a particular body part and allow ourselves to feel into that. Because I'm, what I'm sensing is that in these situations, there's been such a dissociation that that we need to relearn the skill of of actually feeling. And it, it's interesting because with this particular person that I was talking with yesterday, I would say, well, what's the feeling? And the answer was, I don't know. And how about if you touch into this part of your body, what are you aware of? I don't know. What's going on? Well, there were thoughts. So that was something that was an inroad. And uh, when we can recognize that we, diff we have different access points to be able to um, tune in to what's going on for ourselves. You know, sometimes inhabiting ourselves can be so painful that we just exit, you know, that we just go elsewhere. And um, then, then it's a bit of a road to find yourself again, to reconnect um, when, when we have had so much trauma that we then externalize everything, that we externalize our experience, we externalize our well-being and make it dependent on, on things outside of ourselves and become really disconnected. So um, I'm wondering if you have any experience like that, if you can look at at certain dynamics in your own life to see where you've just become dissociated, where you just sort of disconnected. And, and I, I do believe that 
we need to go we need to go back into that connection the the more we become connected the more we become uh embodied you know the more that we are present to our essence the the better able we are to be the unique expression of life that we came here to be and um it it can be tremendously challenging to find a way back to that connection because it it moves through such pain but the irony is that in that disconnection there's tremendous pain as well um so we disconnect in order to preserve ourselves in some way shape or form and in, in uh, desire to alleviate our pain and then and then um we experience more pain and and um and then also the disorientation of not being not having the internal anchor you know when we when we tend to connect ourselves or attach ourselves to externalities we lose our mooring we lose our our north star if we make it something external uh, one of the things that i learned when i was being trained in neurolinguistic programming nlp is when you're creating when you're intending a result one of the criteria for that result is that it be something that's within your control and when we anchor ourselves to externalities those externalities are not within our control so if i'm if i'm counting on you to love me and to love me in a particular way you you might you you might have a change of heart you might die you might leave and so for me to make my well-being dependent upon you is is a recipe for destruction pretty much right and so um we want stirring my cocoa it's lion's mane lion's mane cocoa very cool um lion's mane by the way is a mushroom that is really good for brain function and and um cognition and all that good stuff anyway um we're such we're such interesting beings aren't we so complex so many levels of experience and awareness and you know it's so interesting when we recognize yesterday we were talking about you're not your story and today we're talking about unbottling these these pent-up emotions um i I see where there are so many polarities um, and it's really interesting if we can imagine, because this is a dynamic that I'm seeing happen with people, which is really quite remarkable. But if we can imagine that we are in a play, we've written a play, we're in the play, we're playing the role. And at some point, we can recognize that we're in a play or we're in a story and there's the opportunity at any given moment really to put that take that story and put it aside to step outside of the story to be something new and that's part of you know same thing with this unbottling of all these emotions 
the emotions typically have powerful stories attached to them. And by deconstructing our stories, we have the opportunity to detach ourselves or to disentangle ourselves from the story. And when we do that, like if we just put that story down, we can go find another story or or we can be in a place of discovery that is beyond story um that that is something that is moving from a deeper impulse of um curiosity and wonder so life happens, things happen in our lives, and we create meaning about those things that happen. And good morning, good morning, Rosalyn. So glad to have you here with us this morning. Welcome. Uh, we're talking about unbottling emotions and um, and also really what we're talking about is paths to freedom you know that that uh when we look at the stories that we create when we look at the stories of our lives and the meaning we've made from it and the commitment we've made in so many cases to hold on to our pain and hold on to our suffering and define ourselves by that pain and suffering. I'm not saying to deny it by any means. And um, when, when we have experiences that are painful and we get to grieve them, we get to grieve loss, we get to grieve um, pain. You know, we get to experience that. And we often get stuck in it. Um, and, and where that interface is of being complete with something, you know, grieving it fully, um, and then being able to, part of the, the completion is being able to release it. To, to no longer identify with, with that pain, anger, shame, blame, guilt. Uh, when, when we are able to put it down, when we're able to release it, there's a much greater sense of freedom and we are allowing ourselves to move into greater authenticity then. Because in some way, all of these experiences and the stories and the meaning that we make, we're overlaying them over this essential self that we are. and while they inform us, while they are influential in helping to shape us, they don't need to define us. And that's, that's a nuanced distinction uh, to, to be able to be informed by our traumas without being defined by them. So I, I have learned so much in my life by experiencing the things I've experienced, experienced by experiencing the pain, experiencing the sorrow, the rage, the the guilt, the shame, the the ecstasy, you know, to have to be able to have experienced those experiences and 
and then metabolize the learning from them or the awareness that they that they grew um then the question is how do i employ that do i stay in the experience of the trauma or do i do i use it to strengthen me and to um to support and embolden me. We do have the ability to utilize these things, you know, like a tree, a tree that would be grown in an environment where there's no wind and there's no weather is going to be a tree that's not sturdy. It needs the wind to push it so that it gains strength it needs the adversity to be able to build the foundation it needs to be sturdy. So Rosalind says, experience the sensation without the story, making it safe for the nervous system to feel the energy so it can move or let go. I love that, Rosalind. Thank you for that. So experiencing the sensation without the story, this is the challenge because as human beings, we are meaning-making machines. We do, we make meaning, that's what we do. So um, if we can experience our experience, and it's an interesting, um, at the at our movie night last week, uh, someone was talking about how there there's a shift that's occurred for them when something happens, rather than like let's say something I I drop something in the kitchen and it explodes all over the place. Rather than making up a story about myself or being clumsy or, or um, the you know, life is against me or who knows what kind of stories we might make up. Rather than making up a story about it, uh, what this person has begun to do is to just have a statement of recognition by saying that happened that that happened and and it doesn't have to be more than that and i thought oh my gosh how beautifully elegant that is that happened and and we don't have to go further than that you know just to say that happened there's an acknowledgement and we don't have to make more meaning about it we can just handle it just respond to it and um that what a gift there's such brilliance in that such elegance in that to say well that happened whatever that was i'm not even sitting here defining what it was that happened just like that happened and acknowledging it and being present to it and then being able to move beyond it right how how elegant is that super powerful right instead of oh my gosh and you know now i have to whatever and it's going to make me late or you know without all of the extra drama and story it's just that happened I, I don't know about you, but what, even just thinking about it, there's a sense of freedom for me in just recognizing that happened. And then we can move on. So unbottling, how do we, how do we, allow these 
emotions that are so pent up that we become afraid to feel them, how do we allow ourselves to start metabolizing them in a way that is respectful of their power and respectful of our safety? You know, is maybe to gentle ourselves into reconnecting little by little. So for instance, just putting your attention in a particular part of your body and putting your awareness there in a, to enable yourself to connect and create a, a, an awareness of sensation or an awareness of presence. And, and then to feel the feeling that might be there because we do I, I I've seen so often how we've tend we tend to disconnect when we disconnect from our emotions we disconnect from our bodies as well and um bringing awareness little by little can can be a profound entree to the potential for, for gentle release. Rosalind says, sense of self are conditional patterns. Exactly, exactly. So much of what we believe ourselves to be is just stories and conditioned patterns for sure. Instead, turn attention on the feeling that has been labeled as broken or whatever the issue is. Go directly to the feeling. When you do that, the role of suffering goes away and find that the reaction of suffering is perceived. So exactly, suffering is the story that we make up about whatever the experience is that perpetuates it. So Rosalind continues, the sensation persists because of a resistance to the truth of that story. The truth is guiding the whole process. The truth is, is really beyond the story, right? So um, when, when we experience the experience, it's a very different thing from experiencing the experience and then making up a story about it that perpetuates that or that keeps us from actually experiencing the experience in a way that allows us to process it through. So you're right, it is uh, creating the resistance. So beautifully said, Rosalind, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, with that, I think I'm going to call it a wrap for this morning. So thank you so much for being here and for participating and, and um, being willing to engage in these thought exercises and and inquiries and uh, I'm Mira Rubin this is the core connection and I go live here each weekday morning on the enlightened world network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m eastern and um, each weekday morning so please please check out the other awesome programming on enlightened world network EWN One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And until next time, so much appreciation and gratitude to you. And I hope to see you again here really, really soon.